Hey everybody! It occurred to me today that a lot of people are getting fish tanks this time of year as gifts or they're going out and buying their first fish tanks as a gift to themselves or what have you and a lot of people are getting crash courses in how to maintain a fish tank. So if you've been given a fish tank that already has fish in it or if you've gone out and bought a fish tank and according to what the store probably recommended you go home set the fish tank up put some water conditioner in and then rush right back to the store and buy some fish and put them in the tank uh, that's not the right way of doing it. You really need to get a fish tank set up properly and cycled in long before you ever put fish in the tank. And this process can take several weeks to accomplish if you just do it the sort of au naturel way and let nature take its course. Eventually the tank will cycle itself in and you can start putting fish in it after about four to six weeks. So if you've got a fish tank that's got fish in it already, that's not a cycled in fish tank and you're going to start having issues with your fish dying if you don't do a few things to get them through the initial cycle. So I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I don't want you to think this is going to be beyond anything you can understand or that fish keeping is not going to be fun because it's really complicated or anything. It's not. This is really easy and really simple. I will do my best not to overcomplicate it. I also want to let everybody know this is going to be a video for the very, very beginner. I'm not talking about any advanced nitrogen cycle stuff or anything like that. This is just just going to be really really I just got an aquarium what do I need to know kind of stuff and the first thing you need to know is the foundation for any healthy aquarium is your nitrogen cycle the nitrogen cycle is the process by which ammonia ammonia being a product that is introduced into the tank through organics like fish poop and fish food and waste products plant material that's breaking down. All these organics break down and produce ammonia in your aquarium. And this ammonia is toxic to your fish. So what happens in a normal functioning aquarium that's already been established is what is known as the nitrogen cycle. This ammonia is oxidized by a particular species of bacteria that lives in the aquarium. The product of the oxidation is nitrite, that is oxidized by another species of bacteria that lives in the aquarium and the waste product from that is nitrate and when the nitrate gets up to a high enough level 40 parts per million or thereabouts is what the general zeitgeist in the hobby usually is when you get up to there you do a water change and you remove all the excess nitrate out of the tank and that way your tank stays nice and healthy the ammonia never builds up to detectable levels the nitrite never builds up to detectable levels and you can easily keep track of the nitrate and when it gets up to levels that are unacceptable, you can simply do a water change. And it's not complicated and it's not difficult to do. But if you've got a tank that's already got fish in it and that whole process has not established itself, then you're going to have to do a little more work. You're going to have to do a few things to get your fish through until that process can establish. Now, there are products you can use that can help you through this process. We'll talk about them a little bit later, but let's just talk about doing it the natural way of not having any kind of products whatsoever and you've just got to get your fish through this cycle to get them done. Again, not real complicated. First thing you're going to need to do though is get yourself some test equipment to be able to test your water. I just shot a video about that so I'm not going to go into that again. I will put a link up above, not sure which side that's going to be on, but you can check that video out. It's a few minutes long, talks about what type of test kits you can buy and how to use them and so on and so forth. But you are going to need to be able to test your water. You're going to be able to test for ammonia you got to be able to test for nitrite and you got to be able to test for nitrate and it really helps to be able to test for pH as well so your typical master test kit will contain all of those tests in one or you can go out and buy the dip strips that have all them on one dip thing again just shot a whole video about that you can see that video now that you've got your ability to test your water what you need to do is start testing for ammonia because the ammonia is the most toxic thing that's going to start building up in your aquarium. The more fish you have in a more confined space, and in other words, the higher the stocking density, the, the greater amount of, of fish you have per gallon of water, the faster that ammonia is going to build up. So if you've got a couple little guppies in a 10 gallon tank, you really don't have a lot to worry about. If you've got a nice big fully stocked tank or it's a really small tank that has some, you know, 
maybe a little bit too big fish in it or something, you're gonna really need to sit on top of that tank like a mother hen and check it at least once a day, maybe even more often, because the ammonia will build up in a highly densely stocked tank like that really quickly. So again, every situation, every scenario is gonna be different, but you, so, so that's where the testing has to come in. There's no scenario I can tell you, do a water change this frequently, do this much of a water change. That's all gonna depend on your aquarium, how many fish you have in it, what your water's like, and so on and so forth. So having the ability to test is paramount. You have to be able to do that. So you test for ammonia, you keep watching the ammonia. When the ammonia gets up to about 0.5 parts per million, I would say, don't let it get too high at all. The ammonia is very toxic to the fish. So even a little bit of ammonia is going to be more than you really want in the tank. So once you get up to about 0.5 parts per million, you need to do a water change to bring it down. And this is where it gets a little more complicated. I don't know what kind of water you have. Maybe doing a huge water change might not be the best of ideas. So maybe do a couple of small 10% water changes, but you wanna bring that ammonia level down. You wanna keep that ammonia level below 0.5 parts per million. And that's, you know, it's going to affect your fish over time, but it's not enough that it's really going to be that big of a deal if you keep that ammonia level nice and low. You do need to keep some ammonia in the tank, though, because that bacteria that we talked about, you need to let that bacteria build up in the tank. It needs to establish colonies in your filter. If you've got a hang on the back filter, that little black spongy thing that goes in there, that's where all that bacteria grows and develops on. So when you do your filter changes, don't wash that out. Leave that alone and let it get grungy. That grunge is what you want on there. That's the bacteria that's going to be eating the ammonia and eating the nitrite and that's what's going to keep your tank alive. So leave that little filter alone, let the bacteria get established on that and in order to get established on that it needs food, in this case ammonia. So some ammonia has to be in the tank. You just don't want much ammonia. So again, this is where being able to test your water comes in handy. Check it, test your water, keep an eye on it. When it starts getting up to five, you know, 0.5 parts per million, do a water change. Maybe if you want to let it go a little more than that, that's, you know, that's okay probably, but don't let it get up there very much. You want to keep the ammonia really low to keep your fish nice and healthy. So then you can check for nitrite. Eventually, it'll take a little while, but eventually you'll start seeing nitrite show up in your test. This is good. This means your cycle is beginning to establish. This means that the bacteria that eats the ammonia is beginning to develop in the tank in enough quantities that their waste product is the nitrite. So when you're testing the tank and you start seeing the nitrite show up, now you know you've got some of the ammonia eating bacteria in there and their waste product is now starting to show up in the tank. The nitrite is harmful to fish, but it's not nearly as harmful as the ammonia is. So you don't have to worry too much about the nitrite. I wouldn't let it get above maybe three or four parts per million. Again, you can kind of let the nitrite go a little bit, but don't let it get too much. Definitely don't let it go over five parts per million. But eventually, same scenario, you've got to have some nitrite in the tank in order for those, the bacteria that eats the nitrite has to have food. So some nitrite has to be in the aquarium for that to establish. Once that bacteria begins establishing, their waste product will start showing up and you're gonna start seeing nitrate show up on your dip test or whatever type of test you've bought. So once you start seeing nitrate show up, you've now got both species of bacteria growing in your tank. And now what you're waiting on is you're gonna eventually see that ammonia level start coming down, and then you're gonna start seeing that nitrite level start coming down, and your nitrate level is gonna start going up much faster. And when you get to the point where you don't see any more ammonia or nitrite, then your tank is established. It's not necessarily a well-established tank for certain types of fish or whatever, but your nitrogen cycle is functional. Your tank is at the bare minimum now, safe for fish to live in. You don't have to sit on it like a mother hen all the time. You don't have to do constant water changes. Once you start checking at that point, you're gonna start seeing that you got no ammonia. You're gonna start seeing that you have no nitrite. And eventually you're just gonna see enough nitrate that you just start doing water changes on a normal, regular basis. 
But while that process is happening and fish are in the tank, you've really got to keep those ammonia levels low. And the only exception to that, I will say, and this is where we'll get to talking about the uh, ammonia blockers and water conditioners and stuff like that. But I said in the beginning that the ability to test your pH is important. And the reason that's important is it's good to know whether you are dealing with at the very least basic or acid water. It's probably best to know kind of close to how acidic or how basic it is, but at least if you know whether you've got basic or acidic water, then you know what's happening with your ammonia. Because once you get into acidic water, and that is a pH of 6.9999, basically seven or below, is acidic. Anything lower than seven is acidic. So if your pH is 6.5, then the ammonia in your tank gets converted into ammonium, which is not harmful to your fish. So it's still going to show up on your ammonia test kit, and it's still going to show that you've got 0.5 parts per million. But if your pH is 6.5 or 6.2 or something like that, if you've got acidic soft water, then that ammonia is not really affecting your fish. In fact, it's not really even ammonia, it's ammonium. We won't get into the chemistry behind why that is right now, but if you've got acidic water, the ammonia will not be nearly as dangerous to your fish. So you can actually kind of relax a little bit if you've got a soft water tank with uh, acidic water in it and you can sort of let that cycle go a little faster. You don't have to do so many water changes and keep that ammonia so low. And you also don't really have to put the water conditioners in there or the ammonia blockers. The tank will be doing that by itself. So when you use an ammonia blocker, if you are trying to get your fish through this cycle and you're trying to let this happen, using an ammonia blocker is not a bad idea and I'm not saying not to do it, but there are some things you need to know about how those work and I have shot videos about that in the past. If I can dig one up, I'll attach a card so it'll go into a little more detail. But the long and short of an ammonia blocker or a water conditioner is, first of all, you're still going to see the ammonia showing up on the test. What the blocker does is it artificially forces the ammonia to become ammonium. Remember how I said it becomes ammonium in an acidic tank? Well, if you've got a basic tank, the ammonia blocker forces the ammonia to become ammonium like it would be if it was in an acidic tank. But since it's not in an acidic tank, it can't maintain that state for very long. And so the further away from neutral you are, the less time that that bond will last. And so your ammonia blocker is temporary at best, and it might last anywhere from a day to three days, depending on how basic your water is. If you've got 7.2, 7.3, 7.5, you know, a nice low basic pH, the ammonia blockers will last a lot longer for you than they will for somebody that's got an 8.5 or, or a pH of around 9 or something like that. The ammonia blockers don't last very long in water that's that basic. So you got to know all that stuff and you got to understand all that stuff because if you're testing your water and it says you got 0.5 parts per million and you put some ammonia blocker in there, you test your water, it's still going to show 0.5 parts per million. You're not going to know whether that ammonia blocker is really working or not. You're just going to have to trust that it is. And since it's temporary, you're just going to have to guess when it wears off. So every time you're checking that ammonia and the level's getting higher and higher, is the ammonia blocker still blocking or is ammonia really building up in your tank? You don't really know. And so that's why I've never really been a big fan of using the ammonia blockers. If you've got an established tank where you've got a fully functioning nitrogen cycle and you do a water change, then that's fine because what happens is the ammonia blockers and everything block it for a day or two and in that process your functioning nitrogen cycle will take care of all that blocked ammonia and so by the the, the, the blocker never has time to wear off the ammonia is taken care of by your nitrogen cycle in this situation we're talking about a tank that doesn't have an established nitrogen cycle so if you put ammonia blockers in there they're only going to block until those chemical bonds break and then they're not going to be blocking anymore it's not until you've got the nitrogen cycle established that you can just put the nitrogen you know the blocker in there and forget about it because the tank will take care of it so 
Not saying not to use the blockers. They can buy you some more time. They can buy you a good night's sleep maybe in certain circumstances, but they're temporary at best. And just knowing a little bit about how they work and, may, and knowing that this is not some permanent solution to removing the ammonia, you're just blocking it for a period of time. As long as you understand that, then go ahead and use them as you see fit. But basically, you need to just make sure you keep that ammonia level low and the nitrite level fairly low and just keep testing and keep it there and do as much water change as you need to do in your situation, you know, a little bit at a time just to keep those ammonia levels low and eventually your tank will begin to establish. Now, finally, I will leave you with the thought of there are ways to speed the nitrogen cycle and that is you can take uh, filter media from an established tank and you can wring it out. I don't recommend taking water from another tank. I've shot videos about that in the past as well. Don't take water from another tank and put it in your new tank. That's not really going to do you any good. You want to take that black spongy thing I was talking about before, wring that out. All that grungy, nasty, filthy stuff, wring that right out into your new tank or just put it in there and wring it up and down like an old washboard and get as much of that grungy stuff in your new tank as you can. That's what you want to start establishing your new nitrogen cycle. A lot of fish stores will give you uh, filter squeezings. They'll give you just a bag of nasty grungy water. Again, pour it right in your tank. I know it looks nasty, but that's what you want in your aquarium. That is the beneficial bacteria that will begin establishing colonies in your tank and will eventually establish that nitrogen cycle. That is what you want in your tank is that nasty, grungy, filthy stuff. So again, don't wash that black filter until it gets so grungy that water's not flowing through it anymore. You can worry about that down the road. In the meantime, leave that thing alone, let it sit, and let those colonies establish while you're maintaining low levels of ammonia. And you should be able to get your fish through the cycle just fine. Again, I probably made it sound a lot more uh, dramatic and, and complicated than it is, but it's really not. And again, once you understand the basics of all that nitrogen cycle stuff, Everything else in the hobby is just stuff you learn at your own pace and you can do whatever you want with the hobby, but you got to understand how that nitrogen cycle works. So I hope that helped. Hope you enjoy your new fish. Hope you enjoy the hobby for years to come. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you subscribe and I'll see you real soon in the next one.